I have a funny story to tell you, which is that uh, while Allison was in Big Sur, she decided to have a ladies' night out and go uh, down into the valley for some social activity. So I was at home in bed. She comes home and she's got this giddy little smile on. She's like, I have a present for you. And I'm like, a present? What is this? What is this present? And so she takes me out to her car and lo and behold, there's this dead deer in the back of her car. And uh, she was very excited about it. She happened to be with one of my buddies driving down the road when uh, they saw it there and it was still warm so they brought it back for me. And so now breakfast, is venison with some Thanksgiving leftovers. We got prickly pears, and then also I have acorn mush. These acorns didn't get completely leached, and they're pretty bitter. So my story continues. <laughs> I had uh, just finished my venison acorn breakfast when our buddy Glazer called in a roadkill to my girlfriend. Uh, so we hopped in the car and sped down there to get it. And as we were getting it, actually some other guy drove by all slow, scoping it like someone had called him too. But we got there first, so it's ours. Pretty freaking crazy. Two deers in two days. I guess it's not going to waste, which is a good thing. And now I will have three hides. Maybe I'll actually be able to make some loincloths now. Scare Marcos. There you go. I was talking to someone today. Um, they were like, well, how can you just like, you know, get a call on your girlfriend's phone, then drive in her car down there and get this thing off the highway? And you know, in the apocalypse, it wouldn't have even been hit by a car. But uh, processing that deer, the third deer I've done during Zap, took way less time. The first one, geez, I think it took like four hours just to gut the thing and, and get the skin off and everything. And then the second one I did faster. And then this one, it took me an hour to gut it, skin it, and butcher the whole thing. And uh, so that's a vast improvement, and I'm sure I'll only get better so that in the apocalypse, I'll be able to do this. Uh, I'm learning from my mistakes. I made a bunch on the first, a few on the second, and only a couple on the third. 
I came out and I was marveling at my beautiful little garden beds and how everything's growing. And then I was like, what's this, some little dog or something's been running around in my garden? Oh no, wait, those are deer prints for sure. So the deer are in my garden again. I thought they'd given it up. Now that I stopped hunting them and just decided to be a pacifist and go for roadkill. Uh, it might have to be on. I don't like deer in my garden. And I like to eat them. They're tasty. Roadkill. If you're driving out here at 70 miles an hour and a deer darts out in front of you, if you blink or break or swerve, so you just kill yourself. So what do you do? Just pick them off. Just like this. What? Send a flight away from you. <laughs> <laughs> So the other night when I was gutting that deer, I could hear a mountain lion off in the woods yelping. And I was like, great, here I am covered in blood with this deer hanging from this tree. It was just like mountain lion bait. Tonight, I was burying the guts out under my pear tree and I heard it again yelping up here. And Al heard it and she was kind of freaked out. It was really close and I headed out trying to find it. Man, it moves really quick. It gave me a slip. So Al and I, for years, have heard about this fabled mini coconut tree that grows next to the mission. And tonight, we finally found it. It's not so mini though, the thing's huge. So we're gathering coconuts. Mini coconuts, that is. The coconuts are very mini. They're a lot more mini than we thought they were gonna be. We were thinking like baseball size, but no. These things are uh, almost marble sized in there. There you go. What's it taste like? Chewy. Imagine that. It tastes exactly like a coconut. 98, 99, 1000. If you ever wanted to know what 1,000 acorns looks like, that's it. Oh, defective, 999. Uh, so I was here in this park gathering acorns, and this cool guy came up to me, and uh, yeah. and he said he had some guavas and persimmons. And I was like, well, that's convenient, because I have some apples. <laughs> so uh, we're just doing a little trade. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. There you go, good deal, man. Nice day. You day. start out with the green one, and you basically come up to the top, and you take this little rind, right out the top. You tie your slip knot around there, and okay. then you completely peel the thing. Three to five days a new skin grows, and then every week for about five weeks, you want to gently hand massage it till all the hard spots are out, and then it just stays soft. Yeah. And this is the process of hoshigaki, and hoshi means persimmon, and Japanese, and gaki means dry. I saw this tree here and it reminded me of something that I'd read in my book, which is that in times of famine, the Indians would go and rob acorns. They'd either steal them for wood rats or from woodpeckers. So if I was an Indian, I'd be totally scoring right now because some woodpecker loaded this whole tree all the way up with acorns. If you're heading out to gather acorns, make sure you find a spot that's really loaded. In the beginning, I wasted a lot of time going to spots, picking up that random here. Oh, there's a bad one. See that wormhole? Picking up the random acorn. Early on, there's just not enough on the ground, so I would recommend knocking them out of the tree. And then, you know, once they've just started dumping all over the ground, get out there and get them before they rot. Off to a good start today. Blue on black. Oh, yeah. 
I think it may be losing my mind again. Been doing this for hours. Came up with this bizarre system where I count 20 acorns in one hand. Then I stand up, which stretches a little bit, walk back to my bag, drop those 20. Then I go back and I keep doing that until I reach 100. When I reach 100, I do an actual stretch of my back and then I put one acorn in my pocket. And every time I reach 1,000, which is 10 acorns in my pocket, then I stop and have something to eat. And so now I've officially done this long enough where I've reached 2,000 acorns, which is this bag right here. That, believe it or not, is 2,000 acorns. Unbelievable. It's just, I don't see how it's possible to get this much food from this to last whole year unless you just did this every day for the entire season which is probably what the Indians did maybe I didn't take it seriously enough anyway 2001 I'm here visiting my buddy and he said that the sapote tree was growing near his driveway and apparently this is some tropical fruit that grows here in Santa Barbara and I'm really excited to try it and diversify my fruit in my diet apparently the seeds are poisonous but the fruit is very very sweet as long as it isn't bruised in which case it becomes very bitter so this is the sapote tree and i'm here harvesting it you have to cut it so that the stem's still on the fruit or it'll go totally bitter on you i got mini coconuts and sapotes in one week two fruits i didn't even know existed look at that there's one that actually ripened on the tree let's try it Oh yeah. Wow, that's almost like some kind of like ice cream flavor. Super, super sweet. Amazing creamy texture. I was all excited to wake up this morning after my week in Santa Barbara and have a cup of coffee or at least a half cup of coffee. I appear to be having a serious fireplace malfunction. I open it this morning and there's actually more water than ashes in there. It's still dripping. <laughs> oh, wow, I really need a cup of coffee. Well, it's just these giant grubs or some kind of thing that's eating the tree. You eat my tree, I eat you. Ooh. Oh, look what I found. Ah. Ha. Ugh. Ah. I think from now on the grubs get swallowed whole. God, it tastes like rotten wood, like disgusting. I think the trend here is that uh, whatever you eat tastes like what it's eating. This is an inappropriate use of the white trash cooler. <laughs> Beers do not float. Oh.